Hi guys and welcome. In last week's video I took you with me to my backyard out there and showed you how you can take some really cool images in a tiny backyard in a lockdown and today I want to take you with me behind the computer so we can look at the images that I took and edit them up. When it comes to the R5 and dealing with the RAW files it's actually been pretty difficult and kind of annoying. You have this great new camera you just want to load your files onto the computer and get really awesome images straight out of camera or at least straight out of your Photoshop or your Lightroom. But that doesn't really work with the R5. Why is that? Because the most popular programs like Lightroom or Camera Raw don't really have very good color profiles that support the raw files of the R5. So if you're shooting raw and JPEG for instance you will notice that the JPEGs out of camera look amazing and then you're loading the raw file into Photoshop and it just doesn't look quite right or into Lightroom same thing. Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom basically use the same engine to convert the RAW files. So I'm using Camera Raw, but whatever I do, you will have the same problems in Lightroom. And the whole interface looks very similar now these days. So when you load these files into Lightroom or Camera Raw, you will notice that the colors are not quite right, the files are pretty dark, and it's almost impossible to get a good result out of the images. So that's been very frustrating and of course there are other programs like Capture One but I didn't really want to spend another couple hundred dollars on a new program, learn a new workflow simply because I bought a new camera. So I'm trying to find a way that I can use my current workflow with the R5 RAW files and still get good results. So I've been trialing a few different methods that I want to share with you and show you how you can still get amazing images out of the R5 using Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop or Lightroom. Another thing that I find actually quite surprising that a lot of you don't know that you can change the color profiles in your RAW converter and that that heavily affects the look of your RAW images because there's no such thing as a true RAW image. Usually what we see as a RAW image is the interpretation of the software that we are using and whatever color profiles it applies to it and however it interprets the raw data that it's getting. So you're never really truly seeing your raw file and with the R5 that shows dramatically because depending on what profile you use and what program you use, the same identical raw file will look very dramatically different. I was going to do this video a few days ago but then I heard that Adobe was releasing the 2021 versions of Lightroom, Camera Raw and Photoshop so I waited a bit longer so I can show you today the absolute latest versions of those programs to make sure that there's no big changes but so far I had a little sneak peek. I'm still not very happy with the raw conversions that I get out of those two programs. So before we dive into Photoshop I thought let's look at some of the images that I took last week with the R5, my 600mm version 2 lens and the two extenders. So like always I'm using Fast on Image Viewer to look at my images. What I like about Fast on Image Viewer first of all it's free you can super quickly click through all your files and you can zoom in to 100% to see straight away whether your image is sharp or not. So that's why I really like it and that's what I always use to sort through my images and quickly just scroll through them to see which are the best ones that I should use for editing. So we can just quickly click through some of them and just see that even with the 2 times extender, the R5 does a really nice job giving me some really nice sharp and quality files and as we can see here that lorikeet is making really nice poses giving us beautiful pictures with nice and crisp looks and this was taken with the two times extender ISO 6400 1200 millimeters 400 of a second and that looks pretty amazing doesn't it another lorikeet with the 1.4 extender now all looking really nice and now we're on to the series of Rosella shots that I set out to get and finally got in the end. So these images were actually taken with the electronic shutter in 12-bit. So I'm a little bit concerned that it might be harder to get enough details into the red color, the yellow color and the picture overall because the 12-bit has a little bit less dynamic range than the 14-bits. So let's look at the images. What do I look for in a nice image or in a headshot like this? It needs to be nicely framed and then the bird needs to be upright and what's the most important that the bird looks straight into the camera. So this first image for instance, the bird kind of looks at me but it's a bit kind of hunched down and it doesn't fully look at me. So here we have the next image and that is probably my favorite image from the whole series. You can see the Rosella now turn upright, 
started to look at me gives me a really nice pose and that direct eye contact that I really want. And if we zoom in, we can see it's really nice and sharp as well. And this is taken with 600 millimeter lens, ISO 6400 and 840 millimeters on the R5. So let's press E and that gets us into Photoshop and we'll open camera raw and then we can see what the image actually looks like in camera raw. And this is where our problems start. If we're opening this picture in camera raw or Lightroom, we will see that the colors just don't look quite right anymore. And this is actually a great bird to test the different color profiles on because the colors are so vibrant and this is a real challenge for any raw converter. So if we look at the image here, we can see that it just has now this dull look. The red doesn't look quite red and the overall image looks quite dark. It's just not as pleasant to look at anymore. The same image in Fastum Image Viewer looked nice and bright and vibrant, whereas now we kind of have a bit of a dull image to deal with. So if we go to the upper right hand side of Camera Raw, you'll have the same thing in Lightroom. You can see these different color profiles up here. And you will also notice that Adobe doesn't have a camera specific profile for the R5. It just has four generic Adobe profiles for the R5, or it has more, but these are the four ones that I find suitable when editing bird pictures. So these are Adobe Color, Adobe Landscape, Adobe Neutral, and Adobe Standard. The one that's missing is Camera Standard. I'm pretty disappointed with that, but I still like the Adobe workflow and I like working in Photoshop with layers, layer masks, and being able to save my files as a PSD with layers. So I'm wanting to stick to that workflow. So what can we do? Let's first look at the four different options that Adobe gives us and compare them to what we had when we used different programs. So Adobe Color looks okay, but not amazing. Landscape looks kind of just dark and oversaturated. We use Camera Neutral. If I had to use a profile, this might be the one simply because it gives me the chance to put some colors back into the bird, but overall it's also really dark and flat and the red has basically no red color. So it's not an easy image to deal with because you had to bring back so much color and contrast and just overall not the nicest. And then we have Adobe Standard, but again, to me, this actually looks kind of dirty. The bird is not vibrant, it's kind of gray, dark, and the red, like it's not even a red color, it's like a dark sort of weird orangey color. So overall, pretty disappointing. So what are my other options? I read about this website that was selling color profiles, color fidelity profiles. So I bought a set, I think it was $15, hoping it would be much better than the Adobe profiles. And they are better, but I can't say I'm amazed by them. They work really well on certain images, but on other images, they just don't work at all. So what they do is they make the raw files much brighter, but I feel like often it makes them too bright, blowing out things too much. So let's just quickly look through those color fidelity profiles that I bought. We have the landscape one. We can see it's now too bright, too contrasty, and up here especially, the details in the red are completely blown out. So we don't really want that. So that's a no. Then we have the medium, doesn't do anything, looks the same. We have neutral, it's kind of a bit brighter, but it would be the same trouble. And we can see up there on the red of the bird's head as well that it's a little bit blown out. So I wouldn't be the biggest fan of that profile either. Then we have portrait, too contrasty, too red, won't work. And then we have the standard, which also doesn't work. I know it's a very challenging image because the colors are so vibrant, but I have no color profile in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom that I actually find suitable to edit this bird. So what other options do I have if I don't want to spend a few hundred dollars on a new program and learn a new workflow where I don't even know if the results are really much better? With the R5, Canon delivers us Digital Photo Professional which is a free program and a free RAW converter that does actually a tremendous job when it comes to the Canon RAW files. So I know it's not the greatest program to use. It's actually very capable, but it feels like it was made in 1990 and never updated. It's just very old, very clumsy. You can't really click on things and it just does things. It's just very difficult to use, kind of frustrating to use, but 
I found it actually gives me the best results. So let's just open this same raw image up in Digital Photo Professional and see what it does to our colors. So now you can see here all the pictures in Digital Photo Professional. I don't know if you know about this program at all, but I would recommend if you have the R5, it's definitely worth installing to get the most out of your RAW files. So this is just a quick overview. On the left here, you can have your folders and then here in the middle, you can see all your RAW files. If you just click on them, it just gives you like a preview window of the file. But one thing we already noticed, those colors look much better, don't they? So this is the preview of the same RAW file. But what we actually want to do, we want to edit the RAW file. So I'm gonna click up here on edit image and that opens our editing tab and that allows us to now work on the raw conversion and getting the absolute most out of this nice Rosella photo. So the first thing that jumps out to me right away, the image is still a bit dark, but the colors actually look really amazing. The red is red, the yellow is yellow, the green is green, the blue is blue, and the background has that nice sort of yellow tone. There's not this dark sort of dirtiness, that dark gray look to it. There's a nice vibrant look to it that I know I can easily enhance with just pushing a few buttons here and there. So if we compare the standard profile in Digital Photo Professional with the standard profile in Photoshop, I think there's a dramatic difference and I think Digital Photo Professional wins by a large margin. So at the moment for me, this is really the only program that I can deal with and that I'm using to convert my RAW files. So what does my workflow look like now? I'm using Fast on Image Viewer to look through all my RAW files. I'm selecting the ones that I want to edit and then I open each RAW file in Digital Photo Professional, make my tweaks, transfer a TIFF file directly to Photoshop and then I start working on that TIFF file in Photoshop with my layers and go through my whole editing process. I know this is a little bit annoying because now I have to introduce another program that I didn't have to use previously, but so far this has been the best solution for me and I've actually been getting some really nice images with really good colors. And I must say of all the raw converters I've used, I think DPP actually gives me the best colors and the most detail in critical areas like that red head of the Rosella. So you can see we're now here in DPP and for those of you who are not quite familiar with the program, I just run you through what I've been using. Up here we have our histogram. You can see there's actually a little bit of a gap on the right hand side so we know we need to make our image a bit brighter. This is what we would be doing down here at the slider for the brightness adjustments. Down here we have our color temperature slider where we can either use a standard color temperature that was the one that we had dialed in when we took the photo or for instance we can go down here to color temperature and then we can have a slider to make the image warmer or cooler. Down here we can add a little bit of green or magenta to the image for instance. I don't use the lighting optimizer, I haven't used the clarity. Down here we have different color profiles, so we might be clicking through these to just make sure that the standard one is the one that we actually want to use. Down here you have a little curve where you can make the image brighter or darker. And then down here we have those few areas that I really like to use. The shadows where we can lift the shadows a little bit and then the highlights where we can pull back a little bit of the two bright areas on the highlight. So those are two areas that are definitely going to be using. Down here we have the sharpness and if we click in here, I think Canon does a fairly good job of sharpening and noise reduction. So actually if we click in the next tab up here, you can see that Canon at the moment is applying some sharpening and some noise reduction to the image. And I think it does a very, very good job of keeping the detail and sharpening the detail. So in this case, I'm probably happy to just leave it with the standard setting, but, but this is definitely something that you might want to play around with depending on how noisy your image is or what it does. So play around with these sliders. You can see that the sharpening has a big impact, but also the noise reduction has quite a big impact. And Canon actually does a very good job of removing noise and keeping all the details in the image. So for this shot today, I'm definitely happy to just keep it at the standard settings. And then the other tabs up here, I haven't really been using much. I don't really apply much curve adjustment to my raw files. I'm also not playing around too much with the colors because I like to play around with the colors in Photoshop on different layers. So if I make a change to a color that I don't like, I can just remove the layer in Photoshop. 
rather than having to go all the way back to my raw conversion and make a new raw conversion because I stuffed something up in my raw conversion. So my aim with every raw conversion is always to keep it as low key as possible kind of. So I don't want to do too much to the image because I like to have a nice clean bright base file that I can load into Photoshop and then make all the changes. That just works better for me and I don't run the risk of making a change that I can't revert. So I think it's a better and safer workflow to do it that way. So let's jump right in and actually adjust this Rosella image to our liking. Like I said, I think it's a little bit dark still. So what I would be doing, I'm just gonna lift the brightness here a little bit, maybe to 0.3. See, that's pretty good. What we see here now, these areas are getting a little bit too bright. So what I will do here now, I'm just gonna pull back the highlights a little bit. And you can see how nicely this program actually then is able to pull back the highlights in this yellow area that's a bit too bright and here on the back. Then I also think it's a little bit dark still, especially around here. So I'm going to try to recover some of that by lifting the shadows. But we can see that it does a lot to the red here as well, which I'm not the biggest fan of. So sometimes you just have to play around with the sliders and see what it does. And I don't really feel like I like what the shadow slider is doing to my image. So I'm leaving that alone. I'm actually going to see if I can make the image a little bit brighter still without losing too many of these highlights. And then I think I'm going to add a little bit of magenta here because it has a slight green cast. I'm actually pretty happy with my color temperature. I think I don't think it needs much change. And what would I do next? Or why haven't I done more to this image here? Because like I said, I like to do most of my changes in Photoshop and not get stuck with making changes, permanent changes in a program like DPP. So the last step to transfer this file to Photoshop is to go up here, tools, and then click transfer to Photoshop. And now we'll transfer my TIFF file to Photoshop. And there we have our image in Photoshop. This is almost the hardest part done when it comes to the R5 files because now we finally found a way to get a good result out of a raw converter. And I'm pretty happy with that kind of base file that the DPP gave me. So when looking at this image and when editing images in general, I think it's important that before you start editing, you actually make a game plan of what you want to do to your image. So when I look at this image, there's a few things that I want to do. You know me, I like kind of bright backgrounds. So what I definitely want to do here is lighten the background slightly. I might want to dull down a little bit some of that sort of gray area up here on the left. Maybe I add a little bit more green to that. I'm going to deal with this too bright spot and then I just want to make the image nice and bright and vibrant. So I think overall we don't actually have to do too much to this image. It's a fairly simple one. But I think the changes we will make will make a dramatic impact and make it look amazing. So if you don't know your way around Photoshop and you want to make sure that you learn it and get the absolute most out of your images, please check out my masterclass down there in the description where I run you through Photoshop, show you how to set it up and how to edit your images step by step to make them look absolutely amazing. So check that out. I much appreciate your support. But back to our image now here in Photoshop. The first thing I want to tackle is the brightness of the background. So how do we do that? How do we select the background? In this case, it shouldn't be too difficult. And I want to show you a cool trick how to do it. And most of the times so I'm actually using just the magic wand to make a rough selection, clean up the selection with the lasso tool. And then I expand and feather my selection because that gives me a little sort of transition zone between the bird and the background. And what that does to me is I can make changes and the changes don't show up dramatically. If you normally make changes without feathering your selection, without expanding your selection, what will happen is that you will have a sharp edge and you will see kind of bright pixels, dark pixels, and you will clearly see in the picture that you've done something to it. Whereas by expanding and feathering your selection, this problem will go away. So let me quickly select the background not forgetting that area around the tail here. And what's important as well that you have contiguous clicked. If you don't click it, what will happen? Your whole image will be selected depending on what you click on. Whereas if we go back and keep contiguous clicked, then it will kind of stick to all the borders and surroundings of the bird. 
So what we can see here now, which is a little bit annoying, is that the magic wand hasn't done the best job because the image has a lot of kind of fine noise to it that it can't really pick up. And so I'm just gonna use my lasso tool and quickly clean up around the bird here, making sure that there's no pixels kind of left behind. Now there's an area here around the bird's beak where it went onto the bird. So I'm quickly gonna remove that with the lasso tool on the minus setting. And there we go. That wasn't too difficult, but it always takes a little bit of time to make a selection. So we actually want to save our selection so we don't have to do it every time again. So what I do, I usually save my selection on an empty layer. I click on down here, create a new empty layer, and then I go to edit, fill, and black. That fills the background with black. And if I now unclick this, this will be gone. And now I can click control and left click onto my empty layer that I filled with black and it reloads my selection. So that's pretty cool. That's a good way to save your selection. I know what I said, what we need is a little transition zone. So the change to make to the background or to the bird don't really show up. So how do we do that? We load our selection, we do a new empty layer, we go to select, modify, expand, and we expand it by two pixels. So what does that do? If we look here, it actually moves the selection on to the bird slightly. And what we do then, we go to select, modify, feather, and also do two pixels. So now we have a little area of two pixels that is feathered, that is our transition zone. So a lot of the changes that we do won't really show up too much. And if they do, I show you how to deal with it. And then to save it, I go to edit fill black and I save that. And when I save this image, I'm not gonna save it as a TIFF file now, and I'm actually gonna save it as a PSD file because a PSD file with layers, it's much smaller in size than a TIFF file with layers. So now we've made our selections and can jump into the editing. The first thing I wanna do is lighten the background slightly and then I wanna even out some of the areas on the bird that I think that are too bright or too dark so we get a nice even looking image. And because I didn't use flash when I used this image, I have to do a little bit more editing to it. If I had used fill flash for this, the areas that are a little bit too dark would be brighter and the areas that are a little bit too bright would probably be not as bright and overall image would be a little bit more balanced. So flash helps me to balance the look of the images. So in this case, because I didn't use the flash, I will have to use a combination of a few different curve layers to actually even out the bird and get the look that I really want. So let's do that right now. We start with the background. And as you all know, in Photoshop, we wanna use always these adjustment layers up here on the right hand side, because if we use the adjustment layers, all the changes we make are not permanent. So the first thing I wanna do is I select my background by clicking Control and I onto the hidden layer mask that I've saved, that activates it. And now I click up here onto my curves adjustment layer. And now what you see here on the right hand side is this window where you can see the background that is white and the bird that is black. You can see it here in large. What this means is that now all the changes I make are applied to the white area and not applied to the black area. So what I wanna do now, I'm gonna to go to my curves panel and I'm just gonna pull up some of the darker areas on the curve, just lightening the background slightly. I think that looks pretty good. But if we scroll down here now we can see a few problems because you can see that what I've done to the image actually created this not very nice looking transition. So what I have to do is I have to fix this up manually. So because this area is black means it's not affected by the curve, I'll have to actually brush this onto this layer a little bit. So I'm gonna use my brush with the white color so I can paint over this black area, 33% opacity, 0% hardness, and I'm just brushing over these areas now, making parts of the bird a little bit brighter so it matches the brightness of the background. And I do that wherever there's some fine feathers and that's looking pretty good. And because this area down here is fairly dark, I may as well brush a little bit more of that brightness. And then I always check what I've done. So I just unclick this little eye and then I can see what I've done. I think that looks much nicer already. So next what I wanna do, I now wanna darken all the areas that are too bright. So I'm gonna, this time I'm just gonna open another curves layer. I'm gonna pull down the highlights a fair bit. I'm gonna press Control and I so they're all hidden. 
And now I'm going to activate my layer mask and invert them. So now all I'm doing will only affect a bird and not my background. And now I'm going back to my brush. I'm having a black layer mask. So I'm now using a white brush to reveal parts of that layer mask that I've hidden. So when I do that now and I start clicking, for instance, here in these dark areas, you can see that I'm now brushing this dark curve onto the bird, onto the areas that I want to darken down. What I definitely want to darken down is this back here a fair bit. And then definitely here's also that too bright yellow area that we need to darken down to bring back the feather detail. So now we can see what we've done so far. If you hold down Alt and then press on your background layer, you can see all the changes you've made to the image, even though darkened down the areas that were too bright and light and some of the areas that were too dark. But what I want to do next is just do a levels adjustment. Basically, I'm holding down the Alt key now, and then if I slide over, I can see the areas that get too affected by the levels adjustment. So I don't really want to see any of these areas appearing, especially on this dark side. So I'm just going to go up to here. On the highlights, I'm just pushing it a little bit further because what I will do, I will use my brush and then use the layer mask that was automatically created here. And with the black brush, just take off what I've done on this area that is just getting too bright. And then what I also do, I'm slightly lifting the midtones to give me a little bit brighter look. The one thing I'm a little bit annoyed with up here might be this little bit too bright corner. So I want to dull that down a little bit, give it a little bit more of that green color. So there's many different ways to do it. I will just do it really quick and nasty here for a little adjustment like that. That's fine, especially if you want to use it just for the web. So I'm just going to open a new empty layer, click onto my brush, select my background and just select some of this color here. Use a relatively low opacity and I'm just very slightly brushing over that area and then I'm lowering the opacity back to where I want it. And all that has done is really it's just slightly taken off the edge of that too bright area, bringing the focus back onto the rosella. So now what's next, I wanna just do an overall curves adjustment slightly, just doing a little S curve to add a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation to it. Probably down to that point, nothing too crazy. Now what we see up here, the red is just a little bit out of control. So I'm gonna go into selective color and add a little bit of cyan in the red channel. And then we add a little bit of yellow to it. And then we add a tiny bit of magenta to it and we can add a little bit of darkness or blacks to it as well. So somewhere there you can see how it's just two fluoro sort of red. So by adding a little bit of cyan, it just helps us to get rid of that too bright red look. And what I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna go up here to hue saturation, go to the red channel. And I'm just going to remove maybe minus eight saturation. So if we look at that now, I think we've gone from too bright fluo red to more natural toned down color. And then I will do the same with the yellow as well. But I'm actually going to hide that area all now. And I'm just going to brush it on to the area that is too bright, too saturated. So I'm just going to take it off this area. And what you can see, if you take out saturation on a bird like that, you're actually gaining more detail. And so I think we're almost done with this image. You can see this is not a very difficult image to work with. All we needed to do was slightly brightening the background and using one dark curve on one bright curve to kind of even out some of the areas on the bird. And then we had to use selective color and hue saturation to just deal with the oversaturated red and yellow. So next I wanna apply my Nick filters to this image and I put a free link to the Nick collection down there just when you go onto the website, don't go to the section where it says, get your collection here. Just enter your email address somewhere down there below and then you will actually get the 2012 free version. If you go to the other thing at the top of the website of that link, you will go to the collection that you have to buy. Whereas if you just enter your email address down there, you will actually get the free Nick collection and get those three tools that I'm using on a lot of my images. So the ones that I wanna use is White Neutralizer, Pro Contrast and Detail Extractor. Let's start with the Detail Extractor because I think that will give me some more detail in the red and the yellow areas. And to apply the Nick collection, I want to apply it on a new merged layer so I can put a layer mask onto it, only put it onto the areas that I want to. And 
it only really works on a full layer anyway. So what I want to do, I now want to merge all the layers that I've done into one layer. So I'm pressing Control, Shift, Alt, and E. That creates a new layer with all the changes that I've done. And then I go to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro. And then I just go to Detail Extractor, apply the standard settings. And obviously that does something crazy to our image. We don't want to use that at all. So I'm going to click now on the layer mask. I want to add a layer mask to this layer up here. So I'm going to hold down my Alt key and click on the layer mask. And then it adds a black layer mask to this layer, meaning it is hiding all the changes. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select my background inverse it. So I'm now only selected the bird. I'm going to press B for my brush. I'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to click on some of these areas that I want to bring out some more detail in. And you can see that's what it does nicely. It just adds a little bit of detail to the areas that need it. I don't want to go overboard because then it starts looking funny. But if we have a look here now, that really nicely brought out some more of that detail in the red. So next I want to do that again. I'm going to create a new merged layer of all the layers, including the one that I've just done. Press Control, Shift, Alt and E. I'm going to go to Nick, Color Effects again. And now I want to use the White Neutralizer. What does the White Neutralizer do? It basically grabs the average color of your image and then neutralizes that. And I'm going to apply just a small amount of, to that, but it, that usually helps up to clean kind of murky colors. So if we go to that, we can see it has a little bit of a blue color, but what that means basically is that before our whole image was a little bit too yellow. So let's see what happens. Here we go. I think that's a little bit too blue now, obviously, but before it's just a little bit too yellow of all. So what I do now, I'll just pull down the opacity up here with the opacity slider and slide it to a level where I'm pretty happy with the overall image. It took a little bit of that sort of too much green yellow out of the image. What do you think? It looks pretty good, doesn't it? And if we go back, we click, hold down Alt and click onto the little eye, we can see where we came from. A little bit too dark, a little bit dirty, and then we added just a few little changes to make the image look really amazing. I know I've gone pretty fast for this because I didn't want this video to get too long and bore you too much. But if you want to see step by step how I apply all these changes, how a layer mask work, how you can use layers to your advantage and how to get the absolute most out of your bird images and become a real pro when it comes to editing your images, please check out the masterclass down there in the description. I'll show you everything I've done now in great detail. I know you won't regret it and I know it will take your own bird photography editing to that elusive next level. So check that out. And what I want to do now, I want to show you two options how to crop this image. And I want you to let me know in the comments, do you prefer option one or option two? So if we're looking at this image, I must admit that I'm actually liking the image as it is now. I don't know if it needs a crop. When I took the image, I thought I crop in tighter to make a nice headshot out of it. But there's something about this image, just the way it frames that makes me appreciate the bird even more than like a full body portrait or just the tight headshot because we can see all the amazing colors that the bird has. And so this is option one. And now let's just do a crop for the sake of it and we can see which one we like better and you let me know which one you like better. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna to go to the crop tool, go to a three by two crop and just gonna crop in to maybe this level. I think that looks pretty good as well. What's your favorite? Option one, more of the bird with showing all the colors, a bit of the tail and the feet, or option two, that is just a tight head portrait. Let me know in the comments. So all in all, I'm really happy with the result that I got after a few days of trying to get that Rosella headshot. I completed the challenge that I set myself, so that's awesome. I'm really happy with the nice mail showing us all these amazing colors. Now, if I had to choose between the two crops, I'd probably prefer that sort of unconventional wider crop with the feet showing, which I normally would never go for, but somehow think in this case it kind of works. And as you can see, it's not impossible to edit the R5 RAW files, but it's certainly a little bit more tricky and not as straightforward as it used to be in the past with other cameras. I haven't used Capture One myself for the R5. I've heard a few people saying it does it 
pretty well. So if you have been using Capture One with the R5, please let me know in the comments. Let me know your experience. Are the color profiles there much better? I know you can make your own color profiles as well, but it's all quite involved and I really don't have that much time to edit my images. So I try to keep it as streamlined as possible, as quick as possible. But the only solution I've really found so far is to use Digital Photo Professional to get the colors that I want. Interestingly, the more bright and colorful your bird is, the more Adobe struggles. If you're having a little brown bird, weirdly the Adobe profiles are not that bad. But if you have a vibrant bird like a Rosella or Lorikeet, the Adobe profiles just don't get the job done. So using the Canon program, even though it's a bit clumsy and annoying to use, has given me the colors that I want. And if I just use it to make a little bit of adjustments, before I transfer the image into Photoshop, it's not too bad. If you're using Lightroom, what you could do is use DPP as well to develop your base file and then load the TIFF file into Lightroom and make some more changes there. Although, like I always say, I would highly recommend to use Photoshop for editing simply because you have all these amazing layers on the right hand side there with the layer masks. And now I've saved this image as a PSD file, which means I can come back to it in a year or tomorrow and change all the things I've done. This is why I really like Photoshop and editing in Photoshop. It's not really about changing things, but it's about having the ultimate flexibility and not doing things permanently that I can't change. So what's your process with the R5 and the raw images? Have you found a good workflow? Have you just been using Adobe? But maybe after this video, you have to think about using that twice because it just doesn't get the job done at the moment. So I think at least using DPP can be a viable option to get better results and better colors in your images. So let me know in your comments what have you done and how do you edit your bird images in general? Are you just using Lightroom? Are you using Capture One? Are you using ACR and Camera Raw like I do? Please let me know in the comments. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this two-part series of me first photographing the Rosella in my backyard in lockdown and then editing this image with you to show you how I edit my images and to show you how you can get the most out of your raw files. If you're interested in editing, don't forget to check out my masterclass down there. Otherwise, please let me know in the comments, like I said, what are you using, how you're working with your raw files and which crop do you like the best. Please give me a thumbs up for the video down there. I much appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you in one of my next videos very soon. Enjoy your day.